Hey everybody, what's up? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching the Sit Down. Pack and Dells is here with us. Outcry, the brand new Showtime docu series. Pat, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing really well. So I was just telling you, I watched part one this morning, and there's a lot to the Greg Kelly story. And obviously, people in the Texas area know this. Maybe not nationally in the same way, but when did you realize that this would be a docu series? And I've heard you talk about how this was the most difficult thing you've ever done. So, what were the biggest challenges in putting this whole thing together? Uh, everything was a challenge in, in putting this together. And it's, I think it starts with the fact that, you know, this was a, when we jumped into this, this was an ongoing uh, legal case. And we had no idea where this was going to go. Uh, we had no idea how long this was going to go, what the conclusion was going to be. We had zero control over any element of the story. So it was kind of just jumping in blind and hoping that something happens. Uh, and there was a very good possibility that nothing would happen. But uh, what's unique about the story is that uh, everything was surprising. Nothing in this story played out the way you thought it was going to play out. And everything about the story from uh, a investigative standpoint, from a, a, uh, a prosecutor, uh, prosecutorial standpoint to everything was unique in the story. So it was, um, it was quite a challenge. We did not know that this was gonna be a five part. We had no clue. That was, I mean, probably two years into it. Even then, I don't think we were necessarily thinking that this was going to be a five part. So it evolved completely while we were shooting it. And I think the way the audience is going to experience this story is the way that we experienced it, um, which is a roller coaster. A total so roller. how long was the total production for you guys? Uh, we were right at three years. Wow. Three years, yeah. And, and you know, it was like... It's a local story. I live in Williamson County, which is the county that uh, Greg Kelly was arrested and prosecuted in. And, you know, they have a, a long kind of checkered history with the criminal justice system. Um, so it was a, a personal story to me that uh, uh, once I really kind of dug into it and started speaking with people, the story, it, it kind of haunts you. And it certainly haunted me. And uh, I, I just wanted to figure out what the hell was happening. Yeah, point. I think there's so many different fascinating elements to the story because like you mentioned with Williamson County, the history there, obviously what football represents in that community, people being right. wrongfully convicted. And also like something I was thinking about just the last few years, it's like you look at a person and you think, no way, they never could have done something like this. And yet there can be more to that situation. So what was it like just unpacking the, those concepts? Uh, it was very, very challenging because uh, ultimately what we're trying to find is truth and clarity in the situation. And with a, a, this being a story about, uh, you know, a high school football player that's accused of molesting a four-year-old boy, it's a very, very emotional uh, crime, an emotional case. And uh, it's one that people on both sides of this issue feel very strongly, very firmly that they are the enlightened party. They are correct. Uh, the other side of this is wrong. So uh, dealing with that was very, very difficult to find the clarity and then the evolution of this, you just didn't know. There was no resolution throughout. It's, it's not like telling a story that happened, you know, in past tense and you're going back to dissect that. We were trying to dissect it in real time. So there was never a moment where it was like definitively, you knew where this was going to land. You knew what had happened. You had seen all the evidence. It was kind of for us constantly digging to find that evidence and then saying, well, what else is out there that we haven't seen? What else don't we know? what's gonna be this next kind of curveball that's gonna come out the story. And there was plenty of those. Yeah, it was obviously surprising how things evolved, but how surprising was it that Greg Kelly got convicted and was going to prison for 25 years, given the fact that there were initially two young boys, one of the boys recants his story, and you start off your docu-series with the boy telling the story. So what was most surprising just about the trial and just the conviction at the start? I think the, the most supporting, uh, surprising thing about the trial was that, in, in my mind, looking at it, everything, the whole case was reasonable doubt. The whole case was. Um, um, you had the accusation, and that was the origin of the entire thing, you know, and that's why we actually called it outcry. Mm -hmm. The child's outcry saying this is what happened. It's from that moment that everything else, you know, everything is spawned from that. And so trying to dissect that and figure that out was, was what what was driving us, but um, it, it, I was surprised at the lack of investigation. I was surprised that 12 jurors looked at that original 
uh, um, trial and the, and the evidence, he said, beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, that was shocking, like so many other things of this story. Yeah, and then another little underlying part is just Greg's family history in terms of what was going on with his dad and his mom obviously dealing with some stuff too. And even just living in somebody else's house where there's a child daycare center, like if things are a different way in his family, he never even lives here. So what was it like dealing with that part of the story? There's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of elements of it like that, right? Right, like here's a, a fork in the road. What if something just went slightly the other direction It would change everything down the line? Um, I, I think it was, you know, the, Greg being the football star and where he was and, you know, the fact that he had, he had had four scholarship offers to play college football and he's about to go into his senior year when this accusation is made. That's, a, that's amazing in itself, right, and unique that this guy who's well-known, well-liked in the community, was the football star in kind of a small town, uh, um, you know, is, is accused of doing something so unbelievable when he's, you know, the momentum that he has at that moment is, is crazy. You know, he's got everything going for him. And then this kind of happen, this accusation happens and it's, it just destroys everything. Um, so it was interesting at the way that his position at that time, how that affected everybody else, whether they believed he was innocent or believed he was guilty, right? Because it's, he's a football player in a small town in Texas, uh, just north of Austin. And the fact that he's a football player, I think a lot of people stood up and supported him because they knew him 